Right, I'm not sure if this is going to work. <laughs> We've got a problem with the iPad. Let me just, I'm hoping I'm back on again now. Hold on, let me get rid of that. Press that button there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yes, I'm back. I'm so sorry. Suddenly went, there's no storage in this device and started throwing me up a load of messages. So I'm, I'm still here. I just haven't done any more painting since. So you'll be pleased to hear about that. I'll give you a few more minutes to find me where I am. Honestly, I hope it's all going to cut out again. If it cuts out again, I will film this and I will put it onto the Sugar and Crumbs page so that you can actually see me complete it. So I don't know, but technically something has gone a bit wrong. But hello, I'm back again. Um, I'll give you a minute or two for everybody to find me and refresh their pages. Yeah, we've had a little blip with the tech side. I don't know if it's going to last, but I will do my best. And as I say, if this goes wrong, I will film it and I will put it back um, onto sugar and crumbs. We'll just give this a second or two to hope it's going to hold out. I've never seen this message come up on here before. And I thought, oh, no, what's that? It's something about storage, which worries me a little bit. So this sounds like I need to go in and delete a load of files later today. But it just suddenly went, you have to stop filming. And that was it. We were off. So I do apologise. I'm back again. <laughs> keeps it interesting doesn't it I think I better crack on and keep painting though just in case I disappear so I'm just going to reiterate this if I disappear again I will film this and I will put it up for you to be able to watch um, later on so yeah I do apologize and uh, we will keep going so I will now turn it back on to the reindeer so there we are so let's carry on so we got this far haven't done anything since so let's hope it doesn't do anything else odd and we will just carry on mixing our paint no it's nothing to do with your internet it's to do with my camera my camera has got a storage thing in it and it's full apparently so I, once i've done this it's because you see i've done too many demonstrations this is what it is <laughs> so i will need to go back through and delete some of them i think that's what's happened so i'm going to start and as I say, if it doesn't work, I will come back on and record it later on. So um, you can see there that I've missed the nose bit out because I want it to be a red nose. There's no point in me painting it um, uh, black because obviously then that's going to cause me a bit of a problem. So I'm then just going to carry on going down the silhouette. Yeah, apologies everyone who's just joining. I had a slight technical issue with my iPad, you see, because you've been had so many demonstrations over these since, well, March. Um, my iPad decided that was enough. <laughs> it wasn't going to do anymore. So I'm going to have to go back in after this and delete some of the um, recordings that are in here. So I'm hoping it's going to hold out. But if it doesn't, I will put this video up at the end so you can see it. So... I'm going to start rapidly painting so that we get it all done. So you can see I'm outlining exactly the same as what I did at the bottom here. So I'm just going through that. Yeah, it's not you lot, it's me. And it's not my broadband either, it's my camera. My camera's full, so it needs sorting. I didn't realise it was that full and it gave me no warning whatsoever. It just said, stop. And I thought, oh no, not now, not in the middle of a live. I don't need that. Anyway, we're back up and running again. So let's keep going while we can before it does it again. And you can see here that I'm just filling in the reindeer with my black paint. So black paint is dusting colour mixed with cocoa butter. And that's what we're doing. Oh, have a go at this, definitely. It is easy. I think this is the thing. I've got chocolate on it, though. That's not helpful. Um, it is easy. It's very straightforward and it's really effective. And more importantly than anything else, it's a nice thing to do. It's very enjoyable. And you can just sit back and just paint away to your heart's content. You get these lovely little paintings at the end. And you don't need to do a cake, you know. You can just do it on a plaque like so. Yeah, apologies, my um, my camera decided that it was not going to cooperate. It was full. As I said, you've had, I think you've had too many demonstrations. That's what it is. <laughs> I need to go back and empty my camera a little bit. So I'll do that after this. So fingers crossed I get through this and then we'll be fine. I'm sure Carol's probably thinking, oh, what's going on here? She's been live three times this morning so far. <laughs> anyway, we will get there in the end. So all I'm doing, this is black, nothing else, just black. 
black with cocoa butter. So I'm just painting, it's a silhouette, it's meant to look like the reindeers in the sky, so you can't see any detail, unlike um, the other one I painted, which has got all the fur and the bits and pieces on there. So again, you should be able to do this first go, so you shouldn't need to keep repainting this. You should be able to get the whole thing in one go, okay? There we go. And then we'll head up towards this area here. There's the ear. Like so. Make sure you keep the shape. And then, now, this is where I'm going to change brush, actually, because it's getting a bit tight up there. So I have got changing over to brush number one. Um, so I can get into these areas up here because it is a little bit tighter and I don't want to end up splodging it at this point. So again, if you're unsure where to paint, put your boundaries up first and then you can't go wrong, you see. Like that. So you've always put an outline, it stops you going over because you know where you've got to go, you see. Especially if it's a strong colour like black where potentially do you leave the candle burning until finished or extinguish it um, well I leave the candle on until I finish then I'll have to remember to blow it out I think that's the main issue um, I don't want to be leaving the candle uh, burning once you once you're done blow the candle out so my candles going all the time and that's keeping my pe my paint palette hot, which means that my cocoa butter is staying melted, you see. So if I don't remove the heat, this will start to set. So that's what you need the heat for. So there we go. I'm going to paint that. You can see it's much easier to do when you put your outlines in. So definitely put your outlines in. Like so. Yeah, it's definitely burning the whole time. Look, there it is under there. Like that. There we go. So that's the basic shape. There you go. How quick was that? That's nice and easy, isn't it? And then we're going to look at some of the other decorations that I've done on it. So I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into my cocoa butter and just clean up my brush. And while we're waiting for the reindeer to dry, we'll do his, um, we're going to do the stars next. We'll do that with the white. Again, you need a nice fine paintbrush for this. I was going to do it actually with my zero brush for this one. So this is my zero brush. So this is even finer. It's got red in it as well. So clearly I've been doing something else. Probably when I was painting this earlier. Let's get that out. Okay, that's fine. So what we'll do here, now we've got it all painted, although I've just spotted a little bit I've missed. You see that that bit there? I've got to do that bit there. You know when you suddenly step back from something and you think, oh, it's a little tiny blob there. You can always just go back. You can see already that it's actually got quite sort of matte there, but it's very shiny up here. That's because this bit here is still wet and still drying, whereas this bit here is now dry already. So if I put my finger on it and turn it over, there's no sign of the paint. So um, it takes one to two minutes to dry. It's not too bad, actually. It's pretty good. Right, let's turn this round. And we're going to take hold of this and pick up some of the white cocoa butter, white dust and cocoa butter. Now, white is a bit of a pickle to mix. It is quite lumpy white. I don't know why, but it is. So just be careful with your brush, especially if you've got a nice thin brush. You don't want to be sort of stabbing away at it and then suddenly find that um, you end up with a problem. Do you leave the cocoa butter to set? or reuse and throw it away. Okay, you've got a choice here. So um, it's very cheap, so it's not gonna cost you a lot of money. You might throw away about two or three pence worth. It really probably isn't gonna be very much because you know when you're starting to get towards the end that you're gonna start running your cocoa butter down. So um, you might end up with a tiny little bit in there, but if you know you're gonna come back and paint, you can always just leave it on the palette it will then set and then when you relight your candle or heat underneath, then you will find that this will go liquid quite quickly and then you just carry on. So that's fair enough. How do you put the tracing on the side of a cake? Um, carefully, Barbara is the answer to that. <laughs> Hold it. 
hold it in place like so or pin it on if or don't pin it on you be careful if you put pins anywhere near cakes a um, little bit of tape or something and just hold it in place and um, and then just do exactly the same as if it was flat so it's the same thing so nothing too complicated there right okay let's paint these stars so what I've done here is I've done a mixture of stars so I've done some I've done them quite straightforward. So I'm going to hold my brush up straight so that the tip of the brush faces the ceiling. And then all I'm going to do is literally just put a long line like that. I'm going to put another long line like that. And then I'm going to put two shorter ones in the middle. And I think that makes quite an effective star. I'm just going to move around doing the same thing right up on the tip of this brush. So we're going down, across. So if I do a little one, then the, the little ones need to be the same. Um, so two long ones and two short. So it doesn't matter how big the overall star is, as long as you get those two long and two short. So again, and actually a variety of sizes is always better than trying to make them all the same size. But that's all it is. It's very straightforward, you see. And then... Yeah, Joe's just said something quite interesting. Barbara, you can put your cake onto a tilting turntable. That works well. Tilt your cake back on your tilting turntable in order to get your images on. And you can also paint with it tilted back as well. That works quite well. If it's an image that's going on the side, if it's an image that's going on the top, then you don't have so much of that problem. But yeah, a tilting turntable is a really good investment. And I'm going to be sure that Sugar and Crumbs will have those. So you'll be able to get one of those. You only need one and then you've got it for life. They really don't um, don't tend to break. I've had mine years. So I'm just putting these sort of randomly. Like so. I'll put another one in up there. Put a big one like that so we're going to keep them thin all right so keep that brush upright so that you don't end up with great big chunky stars and then I'm going to take my brush again and all I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to put some little clusters so I'm just going to go around some little dots so we've got a variety of stars going on here don't overkill this. The temptation with this is to keep going and more stars and more stars. And then you look at it and go, oh, no, I've got way too much going on here. So it's a bit less is more with this. All right. So don't go wild with it. I've tended to sort of group them around the bigger stars. You can see it's nice and straightforward. It's not too difficult to do. It's pretty. Yep, you can stick the plaque on the side of the cake. That's a good idea. So once you've done it, you can then add your plaque at the front. You could do it on some modelling paste and you could use do it without the um, cake card behind it as long as it's modelling paste. A bit like my sort of mermaid projects and things that I do. there you know if you wanted to put a moon in or whatever else you could do that as well and then just put the odd random one between just so it looks like it joins up but don't go too mad with that because you want lots of space with this it looks better somehow I don't know why but it just does there we go I'll put a couple of extra ones in there for luck there we go how about that so that's that bit done that's not difficult is it so far I've painted inside a drawing that I've put on here and I've done some white stars going around the outside edge so that's all really nice and straightforward now I've still got white on my brush so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make space for my baubles so what I'm going to do is paint some white circles now the reason I'm painting them white is I'm going to paint partially over some of the colors and if I do that it means that when I then go to paint the colors over the top I'm going to get the true color whereas if I do um, the color 
uh, onto the black it's going to be dull it's not going to look right so if I put white down first then I will get a better effect so I'm just going to take my brush and I'm very carefully just going to make some white now your black paint's got to be dry when you do this if your black paint's wet it's not going to work so it's really important that your white paint is dry sorry your white paint your black paint's dry underneath and you just do little circles you can always just dab your paint in as well like so just like that and then when should we put another one in here somewhere i right, put one in there so again just dab your paint in so if i put red in before i put white in you will get um you'll get a very dull red bauble you don't want that you want a nice bright coloured one so that's why I put the white down first there is a reason to this I'm not just making it up <laughs> I am doing this for a reason okay there we go like that so there we go there's a few baubles on there you can do as many as you want to do can't you it's entirely up to you and then I'm just going to put some white on the end of his nose I did make his nose a little bit bigger than the original picture because I wanted to. So if anybody thinks, well, that nose is huge, then that's me. That's my personal preference. I just preferred him to have a super big nose more than anything else. So there you go. When you paint the outline, do you paint the inside all in one direction? Um, to be honest with you, because this isn't a detailed paint like um, the deer, the animal ones, which has... Let me show you a really good comparison, actually. That's a very good point. So when you do... Um, let me pull this in right okay so let me bring this back in just for a second as ideal because this is drying when you do something like this you can see all the fur detail that's on here and so direction of paint is absolutely crucial so if you ever go on to do anything more like this rather than this you will need to have the right direction where you're painting with this it doesn't matter because we're getting a flat finish so it's actually okay which direction you go in it really doesn't matter but for something like this it will be absolutely crucial yes so that's the answer to that question right there we go I brought it back in again so I'm still seeing little bits of black I've missed now that's just typical isn't it so I'm just going to have to add that when I picked it up there's a little bit there a little spot there and a little bit by his ear and a tiny bit by his neck you see that's paint that's me panicking and trying to get the <laughs> camera going again at the same time um if you want to add a few extra details i'm not going to put an eye in this time but sometimes what i do is just put a little line on the hoof there that looks quite nice a little line there and then you can have just a little movement sort of line there just to kind of indicate that it's moving and a little blot there as well that always looks quite nice I think and then what we'll do is we will switch over colour and we'll go actually I did it in brown earlier but we'll do a different colour let's bring this back in again so you can see it there we go so let's do a pale grey so I'll grab some black a little bit of white these are just going to be for the, um, I did it in gray, uh, brown earlier, so I'm hoping this is going to stand out okay. Um, just where the baubles are hanging, we want them to be hanging. So I'm going to just take my brush and just do a little line. There you go, that's actually okay. Coming down from the antlers, just go straight down from wherever it's hanging. If it's not hanging, don't do a line, you know, don't do a line coming in at that angle. So I'm only just gonna put it on these three here. Um, you can't make up a line that goes like that because that would be incorrect. It's only sort of straight down like that. So those three there, it's relevant to, but not these two over here. So I won't do it on those two. Okay, let's change color again. And let's do a green one. Let's turn that round keep going keep going there we go so we've got spring green here very nice color very nice bright color so you can paint whatever color baubles you like you can you know choose your colors so whatever you've got uh, lots of sparkly colors so now this should be dry which it almost is a little bit wet but not too bad there we go 
I can paint that green on then. I just would not have got that green colour. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. I would not have got that green colour if I hadn't put the white down first. I would have had this sort of sludgy, dark, sort of horrible, dark greeny black colour. So can you see on there, in order to get that really lovely bright colour, you'll get it because I've put the white down first. So you've got to put a base on before you put the colour on it. It's only because I'm painting on a dark colour. So if you were painting on white, you wouldn't need to do it, but we're painting on black, so we do need to do it. Um, and that's why I've done it, and also blue on there as well. So we've got one green one. Now let's have a go at one of the luster colours. Oh, I've just tried to clean my brush in the black. That was a bit silly. Right, let's turn this round. So let's have a go with a luster colour, shall we? So I've got here a colour called, uh, what did I pick up? Royal Gold, I think. Was it Royal Gold? Yes, Royal Gold. This is a sugar, uh, sugar flare colour. And let's turn that round. Oh, yeah, like and share. Honestly, well, I always forget. <laughs> like and share. Oh, I need to have a button that reminds me, I think. I'm actually just grateful the camera's still going at the moment. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll paint some. See, that looks very nice. Paint some. So if you fancy some sort of sparkly baubles. This one here is called Royal Gold. Let me hold that up so you can see it. So lovely job to actually see it sparkle. But it is there. You'd be able to see it better by eye, but that's quite a nice sparkly one as well. So if you fancy doing some Christmas sparkly baubles, I don't know what you lot are like with your Christmas trees, but my Christmas tree is absolutely covered in everything. There is no coordination whatsoever. I am that mother whose uh, children have made stuff over the last 20 plus years and I refuse to throw anything out. So um, my tree is uh, covered in everything. So <laughs> I'm up for any of these coloured bauble type things so yeah bring it on happy with that there we go I bought an eight foot father christmas inflatable father christmas for my front garden this week my husband nearly died when I told him what I'd done oh dear that'll be going up when he's not looking <laughs> well I felt that there might be some children wandering around the village that want to have a look at the lights so I thought I will do this no problem right there we go so it's you can see then you've got really quite a nice the lovely bright colors there we go like that we haven't finished yet though we're nearly there not quite though it's the detail at the end that makes all the difference so we're going to give Rudolph we're going to call him Rudolph, of course we are. Aren't all reindeers called Rudolph, apart from the prancer, dancer and all those long, long names you have to remember. We're going to call this one Rudolph. We're going to give him a red nose. You don't have to give him a red nose. You can do um, just black. That would be absolutely fine. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to. But um, OK, so we've got another one on there who's worried about painting at the moment. OK, you don't have anything to worry about. There's loads of people on here that have done my classes and loved it. And I say I've only been coming on Sugar and Crumbs since March. And I don't think any of you have been painting at that point. So I've now got them all painting, you see. That's why they come back and watch me on Thursdays. <laughs> see what I'm going to paint next. See, give them some more ideas. So go for it. Go for, there's a lovely course you can get as a nice Christmas present, you see. And you're definitely going to get that Christmas present. Now, these baubles have dried or drying. They dry quite quickly. And all I'm going to do is go back to my white. And I'm just going to literally just clip the side of these baubles. I'm going to hold this up while I do this. Okay. So you can see, hopefully you can see it better. Right. So when I just put that little bit of white on the side of these baubles, what happens is it makes them look like they're being caught by the light. Can you see the way it changes them? It is quite dramatic how it changes them. It is really important um, to do it. And then also a little bit, we'll just do a little tiny bit of white on his nose as well. It just looks so much more realistic um, than basically trying to do the baubles um, just plain so a tiny bit of light source does transform it completely and there you go how easy was that that wasn't difficult was it nice and straightforward perfect for a christmas cake and now you can think oh i could do a whole load of these going across the cake couldn't you um it is really lovely and straightforward to do there you go like i've got two of them now 
together that's what it looks like on mass you see they go they're going up a cake now you can vary your baubles you can do all sorts of different things with them you can flip them so you don't have to have them all going that way you can flip it over so it goes that way um, you could have a whole row of them behind each other so if you wanted to overlap them what you could do is stencil in or sorry trace another one in behind it doesn't matter that you can't see these legs you would only paint what you can see so if you wanted to paint a group of them together you would literally just put that one in say there on a bigger board and then stencil it in and then you would have them going along side by side so if you want to add more reindeers um, that's how you would do that so that you end up with lots and lots of them together so you see that's very it's very easy very straightforward and i have concluded my reindeer week and i've survived this live because i was thinking at one point we were going to have a bit of a problem because i thought i was going to lose, lose my live stream i'm gonna to have to have a good look at my ipad after this and see what's going on so um these stents uh, st i keep saying stencil because somebody put up the word stencil and that's um why oh someone's got a question let me have a read of this um why cocoa butter cocoa butter you can layer it paints brilliantly um if you do cocoa butter you can build up layers if you do liquid paint you can't it doesn't work the same and that is why we use um cocoa butter it's as simple as that um nothing more complicated than that it applies beautifully it stays on your cake i personally think it's the best paint to do if you use um i'll come back on if you use dusting colors uh, with clear alcohol um which is or a liquid paint you can't build up layers as well as you can do with cocoa butter cocoa butter is like painting with acrylic um if you do any ordinary painting um or normal painting then it is um like painting with acrylic and therefore you can get the depth which is what you can get when you do some of the other paints that we do so my beginners for example when they do their paints they don't just paint once they paint about three or four times over the same thing to get a depth so it's not just flat and the key with painting is making sure that it's not just flat um, it's about building up layers now this is slightly different it's a little bit more cartoony going on the side of a cake so that's all fine but if you were doing something like a more detailed animal or the gnomes or one of these other bits and pieces um, then you would need um, to build up layers and cocoa butter is the only thing that will do it because if you do it with alcohol and dusting colour so clear alcohol vodka gin and alcohol and then you go and do it again over the top you'll find that the alcohol will lift and take all your colour and strip it all back um, so you don't want to be doing that do use that there's so many questions coming in so I'm just going to read them quickly do you paint on normal sugar paste I paint on any sugar paste and any modeling paste so you can do that that's no problem um, can we do this painting directly on top of a cake yes you can um, just make sure personally as long as it's dry they go Maureen's in there for me um, yeah it, it's just easier if it's dried so if you're gonna if you want to paint a cake cover it and then leave it for 24 hours and then paint it it's just a little bit easier that's all it you can do it it's fine but um, it just take a bit of time what colour is the base? I used um, a colour called Colour Splash Navy and all I did was literally just knead it through some sugar paste. So I didn't, um, I didn't do it very well either, but I did that deliberately not very well because I wanted it to be a bit kind of streaky night sky type look. So when you get your paste, just literally you sort of put your colour in and then just knead it, but don't knead it completely. So you end up with this kind of because uh, again if you look at the sky it's not flat is it it's like streaks of color so you can, if you've already gone through it and it's come out flat you can always take a lump of the navy and add some white to it and then again knead that through but don't knead it completely so that you get that kind of look about it so it looks sort of um streaky right any more any more questions it's been a traumatic morning with my tech <laughs> I'm going to go out to investigate what's going on after this. Can you do it on top of royal icing? Yes, you can. So if you, as long as it's set. So if you're doing it on cookies or something like that, which I'm going to investigate actually sooner rather than later, um, you can paint on royal icing. I'll have to do a, a morning on that. Um, you can paint on royal icing, but it must be set. It's really important that it is set. Okay, so don't try and paint on it when it's wet. So if you're doing something like cookies, you need to leave it to dry for at least 24 hours. Otherwise, you find it's all going to be running through right okay i feel like i need to go and have a lie down after that 
nothing to do with the painting it's just the whole tech side of it oh my goodness me so i will be back on tuesday on sugar and crumbs at 6 30 i'm also uh, in various other places over the weekend so i'm sure you'll see me popping up here and there um and i hope you all have a good weekend and um do have a go at painting reindeers just remember if i didn't say it on this one i probably said it on the other one that i will put the template up for people to use it will be on sugar and crumbs cake community page you'll be able to pick it up from there and i will also put it on my other facebook page which is tracy man demonstrations cake demonstrations so you'll find it on there as well um and but it won't be yet i'll be later on today so hopefully this evening when i sit down and then i'll remember to do it <laughs> All right, so have a good day. Take care. Thanks for being patient with my tech today. And I will see you all again on Tuesday evening. So bye for now.